Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our friendly snowman project. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we have Michael here working the cameras. Hello. And I'm excited for this project because this can just be like a fun, a little bit more simple, totally customizable, easy to switch different size papers, cards, whatever you want, and they're cute. I just want to paint cute snowman. I mean, yeah, sign me up. Okay, so we're going to be doing this project in five steps. So our very first step is we are going to put in the body of the snowman. Our second step is we're going to put in the shadows and the arms. Our third step is we will be putting on the accessories. Our fourth step is we're going to repeat that for our second snowman. And then our fifth step is we're going to put in some snow and any finishing details you want to do. Love it. Okay, so we have some really exciting items in this box that we've never used before. <laughs> Hold on, <laughs> let me get a scratch paper. Um, two of them are brand new paint colors. And if you remember last month, I was just like, if only we had a desaturated bluish, hmm. Well, here we have sea salt. Oh my gosh. Isn't it pretty? So pretty. It's just like, I just love it so much. And then our second color, brand new color, is forest green, which is such a good, deep, dark green. <laughs> I don't know how to say it any other way. Um, they're some of my favorite colors, and I'm really excited for you guys to get to know them this month as we paint with them in this box. The other really exciting bow bonus items this month are we have two new pigment powders. Pigment powders, these are dual tone and how they're made is that they take pigment and then also like a metallic pigment, pigment like gold or silver and they combine it with the color and so then when you drop them in, um, it has an effect. Ooh. So let me show you that. I'm gonna do just water first. And then we have two little scoops here so you can scoop them out. And the reason why we did the scoops is because we're actually going to be like mixing the colors on our palette with them and not just dropping it into the painting. I mean, we'll be doing that too, but we wanted a way that you guys can kind of like scoop them out. Um, but if you were to kind of like drop them in, so this is like a silver blue. And this one, I just want to warn you, when you first do it, it's not going to do anything. And then as it dries, the blue pigment comes out. And that's how we're gonna get that really cool like blue silvery effect. But it's a little bit more soft and subtle. I just wanna warn you. And I did that on purpose though, because I, I think it's a really cool effect, but I didn't want it to like overtake everything. Mm. And I really love it when things kind of change as you paint. And so already you can see the blue start to pop out of there. Love it. And then here is, oh, it might be too wet already. I mean, too dry. Here's the gold and red. And this one is a little bit more obvious. Those are the cutest little spoons I've ever seen. <laughs> Aren't they cute? But look at that. Wow. So you can, it's just such a fun way to add movement and texture in your painting. We're gonna be using them. But um, this one, in this project, we'll be using both of these pigment powders, but we'll just be mixing them into the paint color themselves and painting with them. Um, and then in other projects, we'll be kind of doing the little drop to get the effect. Okay. Um, the other colors that we have, let me just swatch them all out since I'm here. We're also using a deep yellow and we're also using a black, which is gray because that's just water, but here's a more purposeful black. And then we also have bleed proof white. Okay. okay. The four paint brushes I'm using are round two, round six, round 12, and one inch wash. Uh, we're not gonna be using our one inch brush, brush. I'm just gonna use the two, six, and 12, but please know that you can use whatever supplies that you have. Also, when it comes to pigment powders, I just have to say this, for safety reasons, it's usually a good idea to wear a mask when you're dealing with any sort of powdered substance. Do as I say and not as I do. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, so I have my paper taped to my surface using my favorite tape, which is Holbein Soft Tape. And we do not have an outline for this project. We're just gonna go for it. I don't want that to freak you out. 
Just think of it, we're just making marks on a paper and it's just a piece of paper. The worst thing that can happen is you throw it away and you start again. That's like low stakes here, okay? So let's start with our oath. So if you can raise your right hand and repeat after me, I promise to be kind to myself. I promise to be kind to myself. I promise not to compare my work. I promise not to compare my work. And I promise to have fun. And I promise to have fun. Thank you very much. Okay, so very first step is we're just gonna do the body of the snowman. And I'm going to use do that using the wet on wet technique. Now it's, I didn't sketch anything out beforehand. If you feel more comfortable sketching, please do. Um, but what I like to do in order to kind of like help myself prepare when I'm painting and not using a sketch is I like to kind of use my hands to um, visually place these things so I know where they sit on this paper. Um, I'm not doing one big snowman right in the middle. I got to do two. So they're going to be next to each other. So I don't want to do it right in the middle. So I'm just going to be like, okay, here's the bottom, middle, top, bottom, bottom middle, top. Okay. So now I like mentally know where to put it. If it's easier for you to just sketch it, just sketch it. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a little bit. I'm gonna start with water. And I'm going to do a circle using just water and you probably won't be able to see this very well. And then I'm gonna do another circle right on top, overlapping and a little bit smaller. And then while it's nice and wet, I'm gonna take my sea blue or sea salt, sorry, sea salt and a little bit of my silver pigment powder and just kind of drop it in. And it's just gonna kind of move and do its own thing. So I'm not being too um, precious or careful about where this paint is going. I'm kind of just dropping it in. We're basically just giving color to the snow, okay? And then I got to do the head, but there's going to be a scarf there. So the scarf is going to be colorful. So you could do a full circle right on top, or you can leave a little bit of a gap and just do like a half circle with like a curve along the bottom. Again, this is your painting. So however you want to approach that. Snow is so funny. It's one of those things because day one, snow on the ground is so beautiful. Yes. Day two is okay. By day three or day four, the snow on the ground is like gross looking. <laughs> it is. Like when it turns to like ice and mud. Like this is worse. It's brown. Oh, I hate like... this. <laughs> I feel like there was a, my, we're going to let this dry for just a second. Um, but my daughter, when she was what, probably like four or five, um, she was trying to pick up the yellow snow because she thought it was like gold and i'm like luna what are you doing and she's like it's gold snow i'm like that's pee from our dog <laughs> knowing luna it probably didn't stop her at all she did stop but she kind of laughed <laughs> okay so step one step two now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a little bit of a shadow on this and so um, why we're doing that is because we want to show that these things are round and that they have form. And it's kind of tricky with things that are white because we're like, how do we add shadow onto things that are white? But there's still value. Anything that has dimension and is not flat, like two-dimensional, anything that's three-dimensional is going to have some value change on it. And so I'm going to take some more of this sea salt. And I'm gonna take a little bit more of this kind of bluish silver pigment powder that we have going on here and mix that together. And then kind of along the top here, I'm gonna drop it in on both. And that might, I put that down and that feels a bit too strong. So I just rinsed my brush and I'm just kind of blending it out, softening how dark that value was. Now I kind of wanna show you a trick here. If you want it, if you want it to seem like this body is on top of this ball here, so if this ball is on top of this ball, then it would be a clean curve along the bottom here. Mm. You see that? Yeah. If you want it to feel like it's more smushed and flat and not as like roundish, then that curve would kind of go away and it would kind of just be like more in the middle like that. Like, do you see how that changes the shape? That's yeah, weird. It's so like play 
with where you put your shadows and the shape of your shadows because the shape of your shadows is going to inform, inform the shape of your three-dimensional forms in the snow. And again, we're not going for super detailed here. It's just kind of like a little bit more simple, gestural, playful, all that kind of stuff. Listen, I'm questioning myself now. Is snow blue? Is it really light blue if you like get down to the bones of it? Snow is reflective, so it's gonna be whatever color is around okay. it. But I have found for me that whenever I'm trying to do like white, cool white, like snow is cold, so I do shadows that are cooler, blues, purples, mm. that kind of thing. If if I'm trying to paint like warmer shadows, like I'm thinking of like cement. Think of like that gray color cement. Yeah. Usually my shadows lean a little bit warm. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I don't know if that's like the technical way, but usually if it's snow, I'm leaning towards grays, blues, purples as my shadow colors. Good to know. And then flowers, if they're white flowers, I tend to lean towards yellows, creams, and greens because think of leaves, think of the center of flowers. Those usually tend to lean warmer neutrals instead of cooler neutrals. Okay. So while that dries, we're gonna mix together a brown. So for our brown, I'm going to take some of this gold red and let's grab some forest green. And let's see what that does. That makes it brown. Perfect. Now you, there's multiple ways that you can mix brown. Another way that you could have done it is if you take this red gold Let's throw in some black and some yellow. Let's do more black. But that's a brown too. And there's probably another way you could have mixed. There's so many ways that you can mix brown. But basically you just mix them using complementary colors, which are colors that are across from each other on the color wheel. I All right, I'm gonna make sure this is dry. I'm actually very good at mixing brown it turns out every time i try to make any color <laughs> they just turn into that you know what I mean? you're like that's actually my hidden talent is i can mix a really good muddy color <laughs> it's just mud it's all i'm good at and the reason why i want this to be dry is because we're going to do our branches and i don't want the brown to bleed into my white slash blue snowman So I'm gonna to switch to my round two. And when you dig, do um, twig arms, I'm just gonna to touch that to make sure it's dry. Um, I kinda like, just do like a wavy line. Like see how it's not totally straight? Right, it's twiggy. Twiggy, and then um, do a, a few smaller branches off of that. A little bit thinner. And remember like, Branches come in all different shapes and sizes, so don't think that the two arms need to be twins. They don't. Odds are you're not going to find two branches that are exactly the same. Almost out of that black. Okay. And then same thing over here. Does it feel vastly different to paint with those powders than with like a liquid color? Like, do they spread the same? Um, They do spread the same, but they will have a sheen to them, which is kind of cool because they have that metallic pigment in there. But once you get them wet right. and play with them, then um, they're very similar. Okay. Sometimes the powdery um, can take over the brush a little bit. It's always a good idea to rinse your brushes really good after. It's not like the difference between watercolor and gouache. It's very similar. No, it's really similar. Okay. There we go. Those are our arms. <laughs> They're so cute. Okay, now we get to do step three, and this is where we get to do accessories. So we can do hats and scarves and bow ties and buttons and whatever you want to do. I'm going to do a green scarf. Um, so I'm going to, you can switch to your six. I'm going to add more green on here. And remember, this is your painting, so you can totally switch this up. 
but using my nice forest green, I'm gonna do kind of like a soft curve. And you want a scarf to be go out thicker than the head. And notice that the it's a soft curve along the bottom too. And think of a scarf, how it like folds. So usually I'll leave like a little bit of a thin white line or you can do a dark line in there to show that it's kind of like folded or wrapped. And then for the scarf tail, I'm just gonna do a kind of curved line coming down. And I always like put it in and then I'll go in and kind of like thicken it. I'm just thinking, I know this is the standard way to make a snowman, but really we should pop their arms out and then kind of poke them in closer to their neck and angle them down. You know, this is like its arms are like coming out of its rib cage. Oh, are you talking about like propor proportions yeah. and placement? Yeah, we should make the sticks. I'm like, I'm going to put forward a movement to make more anatomically <laughs> correct snowmen. That would be so much harder. Oh my God. And the sticks would just slide out. Okay, so I'm adding little, using my two, I'm adding little wispies as if there's like frills at the edge of my scarf. Now, remember, this is just kind of like playful and gestural. So like if, you know, you get a little bit of bleeding, leave it alone. If you get like a little bit of, you know, a shadow somewhere, like go with it. You know what I mean? Like let go in this painting and just allow yourself to be playful and enjoy watercolor for what it is and what it does. I'm gonna add another little layer right here as if there's like a little bit of a shadow coming out from underneath. And then for the hat, I wanna do like full on just this blue silver pigment powder. So I'm taking my two and I'm gonna start. So you, you a hat goes over the roundness of a head. So we're gonna be painting into the head. We're not gonna go around the head. So, and I'm gonna think about like those knitted scarves I mean, knitted hats. So it's just like the lines. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do the top of the beanie. What a weird name. Beanie. Because beanie? it makes you look like a bean. Why, why do you think it's called a beanie? <laughs> look that up. <laughs> I don't know. And then um, you can do a little puff ball. And if this one you want to do like a little water drop and then like sprinkle in some of that powder, you can. Or you can just like drop it in whatever you want to do. Boop, 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 boop. And again, we're letting the water and the paint and the pigment like do so much work for us. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now we need to do eyes, mouth, and nose. So we're just using black for the eyes. And I'm gonna do a smile, just like a thin black line, even though I think traditionally they've used little stones for the mouth. So let's start with the eyes. Using my round two, I'm just going to go boop. You ready for the beanie explanation? Yes. <clears throat> the term beanie for the snug brimless cap is believed to have originated from the early 20th century American slang term bean, meaning head. Oh, so it's for your head. Don't bonk your bean. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, beanie. Okay, now for the orange for the nose for our carrot, I'm just taking that red gold pigment powder, mixing in some of that deep yellow, and that's gonna create kind of an orangey color. And I'm just gonna do a triangle sideways. Okay. Love it. So, and remember carrots are wonky, so maybe yours has a curve to it, maybe it doesn't. Like just simple. Okay, that's it. That's our carrot, <laughs> two strokes. And then um, for the mouth, I'm going to actually take my water and add it to the black. So it's, a, it's more gray. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I want it to be a soft smile. And so I want to lighten my value. You can do pure black if you want. It will just make your smile more prominent. So just whatever you wanna do. And it's just gonna be like, That's it. Cute. And you can learn too. So I'm looking at this and I'm like, okay, the my snowman like top head did not stay very round or maybe as round as I would want it to. 
you are welcome to like try and reshape it if you want. You know, uh, because we've talked about it, that I love series paintings like the same place in four seasons or yeah something like that this would be cute to kind of do like a winter series and in the beginning have them normal snowmen and then kind of start to paint it as a spring scene and have them kind of melt into each other <laughs> that would be cute yeah. and then uh, one thing that you can do like if you painted your branch in too far into this and you want it to like not be as deep into the body i just took bleed proof white and just like erased some of the nice twig. Nice. So like no pressure at all. You can also use this bleed proof white in around 12 if you want to do like a little highlight. Like maybe your snowmen snowmen themselves got too blue and you want to kind of whiten them up. You can just do some layers of bleed proof white. I've been watching you paint for years. Uh and I'm gonna go ahead and tell everyone the secret at home. What? Bleed proof white. <laughs> You don't need to watch any more tutorials. That's the secret. Bleed Just always white. have bleed proof white. See, look at our little snowman. Isn't he so cute? He's perfect. I just can't. I had the best time painting this project. Like every little accessory I did, I just went like, he <laughs> like, <laughs> so cute. And then if you want that like knitted texture on the um, scarf, like you can go in with your round two and you can do like little lines. You know what I mean? Or you can leave it smooth. It's totally up to you. Sometimes I like to do like a little hint of texture and then um, like leave it alone. You can do little like detail lines. You can do a cross hatch and a cross hatch is when you do it angled one way and then angled the opposite way. So uh, it's just up to you. Okay. This snowman's name is David, but he spent a a semester abroad so he goes by david now <laughs> this is david. david and we're about to paint his friend jacques love it <laughs> <laughs> his name's jack but he also did a semester abroad <laughs> so he goes by jacques <laughs> jacques and david and everyone just like kind of rolls their eyes like, oh, like, oh hello you're from ohio <laughs> <laughs> okay so we're gonna start again Basically the same exact process. Now, the beautiful thing with this project is we're doing two, which means anything you learn from the first one, you can put into the second one. So let's say you're like, uh, like for me, I'm telling myself, I maybe went a little bit too blue in my snowman. So I'm gonna see what this snowman will be like if I stay more within just the sea salt color hmm. um, instead of mixing in the silver blue pigment powder. And we're just gonna see. So I'm gonna start with the body. So circle, circle, mm, they're gonna run, the branches are gonna run into each other. They're really gonna be holding hands in this one. And then I'm gonna take sea salt. I think snowmen probably abide by insect rules. I think you're painting the thorax and the abdomen here. Yeah? I don't know, I'm just <laughs> I'm playing. Like, I don't even know what those are, so. Think of an ant. You know how they have like little sections? Yeah. yeah. Little sections, the thorax and the body. Abdomen. Abdomen. <laughs> And the head. And the head. So put in your thorax, <laughs> please. <laughs> Thank you. And um, see, I kind of like how that's more of a desaturated blue. Yeah. I don't know if you'll be able to tell it as much on screen. Um, so They are very light colors. Yeah, they're very light colors. And remember, your snowmans, they're like your eyebrows. They can be sisters. They don't have to be twins. <laughs> have you heard that before? I have heard that. <laughs> and we'll do the head. And I'm gonna round this one out a bit more because my last head ended a little too square. And think about how hard it is to roll perfect balls. Like we don't want these to be perfect circles stacked on top of each other because that's actually not realistic. You do not, when you see a snowman, they're very lumpy and the circles blend together actually a lot of the time. And so don't feel like you need to do perfect circle, perfect circle, like a compass or anything like that. We want these to be a little bit more natural i think in some places where they get different types of snow than we do it might be easier to get a cleaner looking snowman missouri snow is like concrete yes and like my snowman thorax and abdomen look like cylinders they're not round <laughs> at all they're just like tubes okay i'm adding the shadow in and this time i did add a tiny bit of that pigment powder 
just for a little different shape and shadow. Okay. And again, the, sh the shape of your shadow will give you kind of a hint of the overall shape of the form. But this is such a light value and this can be really gestural that just doing like a swoop is enough. I have a question. Okay. I noticed that you maybe subconsciously did the shadows on the same side of the mm -hmm. snowman, mm -hmm. indicating, you know, a light source. Yeah. If you didn't, would it would the painting look off? Would it make you feel weird looking at it, do you think? Or is it just like do whatever? Do whatever. All right. It depends on the painting. In this type of painting, since it's obviously not photorealistic, okay. it's not gonna like throw anything off unless you have someone like the art police the who's art just friend. like your shadows are on two different sides, you know, in the art place. And you're like, calm down, art police. It's literally a snowman, you know? Is this a two-point light source? Mm. <laughs> mm. Whereas if you were doing a photorealistic painting and entering it in a show where it will be critiqued, maybe paying attention to your light source and making sure it's consistent throughout would be important. These types of paintings. I've started to um, personify the art friend, the art police, and it's almost white. Just it's white from the white. office. Oh, look. He Just does, being mean about stuff. He does say that about Pam's painting. That's right. He is okay. the art friend. So I'm going to put in the branches. It would be Dwight or Angela. <laughs> she would just talk bad about it behind your back. Yeah. Dwight would confront you about it. Is it weird that my favorite part are these little branch arms? Because I really love them. No, they're really cute. I always think the branchy parts are fingers and they have just like giant hands with tiny arms <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i love that okay so i put in my branches i think i probably went a little bit too far into the body again but it it's okay like these are the things where you're like whatever this is a fun snowman all right so now i'm gonna take my round six, and I'm gonna do a yellow scarf this time. But remember, you you also have red. Like we have so many colors in this box and I'm sure you have other pink colors than what was included in this. So like, feel free to change this up, make this yours. I can tell I love this project because I just have multiple ideas of like things I want the community to do. Yeah. I want someone to paint like a ton of birds on their arms. Oh my gosh, like that would be so cute. Winter birds just perched like all different directions like chirping at each other all over their arms. We will do one cardinal right here. Cute. Um, oh my gosh, I'm so dumb. I didn't even <laughs> see that. <laughs> you already did it. You did it already. The amount of times that you're like, listen to this great idea. You're and like, I'm like, we're doing that. That's what we did. <laughs> We've been married a long time. We have the same ideas. <laughs> I didn't see the bird. Yes, he did. There's one red thing on this whole painting. I, it's a bird. I usually watch the close-up cam. So I don't see the I don't see your reference painting. I'm just watching the close-up cam. Well, you know what? If you guys Two birds is a different idea than one bird. <laughs> Michael, genius idea. Thank you. You're so smart. It's very and original. I love That's my it. Original idea. Please take Michael's advice and paint a bird on your branch <laughs> okay all right then i'm red in the face i'm happy you guys can't see me <laughs> oh i'm gonna get some fresher yellow i'm red in the face too from laughing i love that that's so funny mine is uh blushing embarrassment so. <laughs> and then i my um my yellow bled a little bit because my snowman wasn't totally dry. And so I'm like, perfect. That's just where I'll make the scarf come out. So like, whenever you have mistakes like that, you can adjust things to cover them up. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Where I'm like, great. Now you can't even tell that that's where it bled because my scarf is now there. My scarf tail. Um, okay, so there's my scarf. And let's do eyes and buttons. Well, let's do a hat first. So I'm gonna take my round two. And what I'm going to do is you're gonna start with like a curved line going into the head. So it's gonna be here. Okay, so that's the brim. And then you're gonna paint like the back side, which is another small curve. And then that same angle curve that you have for the brim, you're gonna do it 
there. And let's just fill this guy in. Okay. And then just straight up, we're doing a little top hat here. Top hat, same angle curve. And then we need to do the other side of the hat. So it's gonna be a curve going the other way. And I'm just gonna kind of fill it in with water. It's okay if it's gray because when black is highlighted or has a like light on it, it's gray. It's a lighter value than black. There's my little top hat. And then we can go back in and add details if you want. But we're gonna let that dry just for a second. You wanna pop Birdie up to say hi? Oh yeah. Birdie, come here. Come up here. Hello, Birdie. Oh. Birdie came to work with us today. Oh. Oh. <laughs> he hates it. He doesn't want it. All right. That's okay. You can see her little snout. Good girl. You wanna come this way? <laughs> she can't. She's like, this is her face. That's all right. Good girl, bird. Okay, we'll do black eyes. And this is really fun too, because if you want to practice on a scratch sheet of paper, like different faces where the size of the eyes and the closeness or far, like how close or far away they are, the shape of the mouth, all of that will inform the personality of the snowman. So you can be really playful and switch it up. And if you're just like, well, how do I know what face I want to do, we'll just do a few on a scratch paper and play with it, you know? Make a snow woman, you know? Yeah. I just got so nervous. I had to like look up at the painting and make sure you didn't paint a female one up there because I'm like, this is a great <laughs> idea. Wouldn't it be cute if this was your Christmas card and you did a little snowman version of like you and your partner? Oh my gosh, yes. <laughs> and your kids. Yes, and Birdie. The <laughs> and your dog. dog. Little smile. Just make her out of mops, because that's what Birdie looks like she's made out of. A little mop. Okay, so there's our snowman. They're friends. They're super cute. Jacques and David. <laughs> it's Jack and David. <laughs> and we're going to do a little cardinal. So if you want to practice on a scratch paper first, that's totally fine. This little guy is like... Super cute. He's facing us with his head slightly turned. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my round six and I'm going to do like an oval. So an oval right here. And then I'm going to take this pigment, red gold pigment powder. Just kind of drop that in. Okay. And then the tail is kind of coming out from the bottom slightly to the side. And I'm just going to do these long strokes. Cardinals are so beautiful. They are. And the nice thing about cardinals too is like, you don't have to be the best bird painter. People are gonna see a red bird by a snowman mm -hmm. and know that it's a cardinal. Yep. So give yourself a little bit of like grace and freedom. It does not have to be exact. Also, I've seen different shaped cardinals and some guys are like chonky, you know what I mean? So yeah. like, it's okay if yours has a little bit of girth, maybe a little bit skinnier, it's fine. Fat winter birds are the best. They're so cute. Okay, and then for the head, it's gonna be like another little circle up here and then like their little, can they see that close up? Yeah. And then we do have to do like a black face because they have the, the beak and then I'm trying to think, they have a little black on there. Yeah. So we're gonna let that dry before we do that. So we're gonna do other space spots and then come back to it because Efficient, efficiency. I'm gonna add little buttons to Jacques. And let's add stripes using bleed proof wipe. That's still kind of white, um, wet, so I'll just dry the whole thing. So if I'm doing stripes, remember they don't have to be perfect. And then if we're gonna say that there's like two folds, like you could do one stripe along here, but I want it to seem like there's two rows. So there'll be one stripe kind of going halfway. So see, I'm not going all the way to the bottom. I'm kind of envisioning um, where it kind of folds. 
and then we'll do the bottom stripe. And notice how I'm not trying to get them to match. You actually almost want them to be off-centered from each other. I didn't do a very good job, but if you do them off-centered from each other, it's more obvious that those are two different sections and not one big section. Yeah, I mean? I also feel like you kind of curved them, which gives a good illusion. Like the bottom ones you curved one way, and the yes. top ones you curved the other way. And then if you need to change like where your branches come out, you can. Maybe you want <clears throat> stronger highlight. Oh, wouldn't it be cute to do little rosy cheeks? <laughs> yes. I'm going to try it. Just a little bit of pink that I'm grabbing. So I'm grabbing a tiny bit of that bleed proof white. I mean, the <laughs> red pigment powder, not bleed proof white. Oh my gosh, Jacques, <laughs> you look fabulous. <laughs> okay, now let's do the little face on the cardinal. So basically, like into the head here. So I'm basically just doing like a, it's so tiny that I, I can't describe very well what it is that I'm doing, but basically I'm just doing black in the face and then we can grab a tiny bit of orange coming out for the beak. But again, it's so tiny and detailed that you're not really gonna, my directions are not gonna be very clear. Um, but please know that like, there's different ways that you can paint a cardinal too. Like this is an angle where it's kind of like sitting at us and looking at us kind of, you know what I mean? Like its body is facing toward us, but you can do it from the side. You can do one, like there's so many different silhouettes that you can do. So if there's a bird silhouette you feel more comfortable doing, feel free. Here's my original idea to redeem myself from the birds. Okay. Bats. <laughs> hanging. Genius. Hanging off the arms. <laughs> For those of you where it's Halloween all year, bats. Bats. All right, now I feel better. Okay, so I'm gonna add another little rim here on the hat because that has dried to like a lighter gray. So if you wanna do like a little bit of a black ribbon right here, you can. And just a hint on the top that there's like a lip to that hat. I watched an artisan make top hats and they light them on fire at the end to get the texture right. Really? It's very strange. Super interesting. And you also have bleed proof white. So let's say that like you want to have a little bit more definition between the top of the hat and the rim. You can go in and just do like a very thin white line like that. And that will help kind of define it a little bit for you. Okay, we're on our very last step, which is we're just gonna put in some shadows um, on the ground just to ground our snowman. So um, you can pick up some sea salt, you can pick up some of the blue, blue silver pigment powder, and just kind of like right underneath the snowman and a little bit behind it. And then just use water to kind of spread it out. And then sometimes I like a good dry brush texture. So if my brush is dry and my paper is kind of, oh, I got some red in there. Be careful. Can you do that again? There we go. You can do some dry brush texture here. So it's just like a hint of some ground. You also have white so if you want to like paint it a shadowy color and then add some bleed proof white just enough to show that this is on a snowy ground but nothing too crazy and that's it love it that's our friendly snowman so um i hope you have so much fun with this and please know that this i really wanted you guys to see this as a jumping off point how can you make this yours? How can you, maybe you wanna add a background. Maybe you wanna add a Christmas tree. Maybe you wanna do your little family or accessorize it a different way. Just know that like, I just wanted to give you the basics of creating a snowman because I know how incredibly creative you guys are. And once you have the, that basic information, then you can just run with it and play. So I really hope that you guys play. Um, thank you so much for painting with me. I can't wait to see how your snowman turn out. Michael, always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you for your genius idea about the cardinal. <laughs> Anytime. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye.